Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I want to bring an update on the house generator that I made previously. So here in this video, I'm also going, going to start from previous house generator. So we'll link down in the description some tutorials on how you can get this set up as well. So basically what I did in other videos was using a L system that generated a random shape. And on there, I would copy grids. And as you can see here, I have the L system generating random shape. And then I will copy some uh, grids on that to get a main shape for a house. Also here in the L system is a random seed value, which I linked now to my number of frames. So whenever I change the frame number, I can get different variations of a house. Now for the next part of adding our modular models, I'm going to use some new nodes from Houdini 18.5. So in Houdini 18.5 is a new node called the chain node. So let's grab it here. And with this node, we can then copy models on a curve. And what I have here are the curves for my floor level. So I will use this and the chain node will automatically put all my models next to each other. One of the first things to do is actually convert this into a curve. And the node that we'll use for this is a carve node. So we'll place down a carve, plug it in over here. And as you can see, it already got rid of the polygon, but we only have the curves now. And here I'm going to set the U to a zero and the second U to one. I'm also going to use here the breakpoints and enable this. So when I actually view here my primitives, I can see that I have multiple numbers of primitives now in my scene. Compared to here, we only had two primitives, so zero and one. But in here with the carve node, each line is a primitive. So this can be my input here for the curves. Now for our second input, we need some basic geometry. So you can use some boxes for now, or you can already try to make some models or load in models you have. I'm going to here use some models I already made. So these are some quick models. And the first model is just a simple box, a small box with a color on it, and also an attribute called class. So I create the attribute called class, and it has the value zero. Then I made another house model, which is just a box bigger, and then also a window in there then same here again i'm gonna save it give it the name the class and then here we have the value of one of course then another model which is then a bigger wall and a bigger window also some basic colors on this here as well and of course here we have also the attribute class and we have here stored value two so the class Attribute will be very useful in the chain node. So we have class value 0, 1, and 2. So these all get merged together. And I also here align them here on the y axis so they are nicely here on my grid surface. Now I can plug this in over here. And let's see what, what the result will be. And as you can see here by default, it will already align all the models that we have. But as you could see, since every window is, for example, made of a separate module, we can see that they are not together. So that is where the class attribute comes in handy. So let me go here to the settings of the chain. And here, by the connectivity, find piece connectivity, we need to set this by attribute. So it will just look here if pieces are connected or not, but I want to override this by a custom attribute, which is in, by default, it's called class. So you can make your own attribute, but by default, it's called class here. Then the next thing I notice is that my building is not fully closed. We can see that we have a couple of gaps here and there. So what we need to do is we have here the map length, and we're going to set this to the first option, to the curve length instead of the geometry length. So when you click this, you can see that we automatically closes the building now. And we now have this nice building. So I can already here again play with my parameters and we have a nice building already. Now a few things to change here is we always have the same repetition in my building. So we can see that we always have the same wall and window over and over again. So we can go here at the bottom and we have an option here for the pattern. So we want to control the pattern. So right now the pattern is set on cycle. So it will cycle between the class 0, 1, and 2. So we'll always have the same uh, pattern and result over and over again. So we want to set this, of course, 
from cycle to a more random variation. And as you can see, we now have a more random approach to where props are placed. So playing around here with the parameters, we can see that we have now a more variation in here. And this is already just the power of this node. So we don't have to tackle any complicated situations anymore and figuring out where to place models. The chain node will all do that for us. So it will nicely put all the models together. So what we can do, for example, is we can go back to one of my main models, like the box, and I can just make it bigger. So let me grab here that box. And as you can see, I can make it bigger in real time and it will automatically adjust here. So before, if you would try to build a system for this, this would be have been way complicated to build this all manually. But now with the chain node, we can just play around with this and have a way easier uh, generator for houses. So now it doesn't really matter what the size of my modular market is. We can just here have them automatically fit next to each other. Now let's make this more interesting and I want to add some pillars. I made a base model here for a pillar, so just a box, a bevel, added some normals and also a color and alignment. So these I want to copy on the corners. So if I go back here to my base shape, I will actually use here the corner points to copy my uh, pillar on. So let's grab a copy to points and we can just here copy this on the points. And I actually should grab from the carve node here, so that will give a better uh, orientation, as you could see. We can also instance them if you want to. And now we can basically merge these results. So we can merge the chain node with the copy to points. And as you can see, I might need to uh, place this a bit better. So we can use a transform. And we can here place this down. So now we have that. We can also here have then a roof layer and we can basically grab this transform, copy this by holding Alt. And instead of using the carve node, let's grab the flatten edges. Let's put that in over here. And then we probably have to move this up like this. 0.5 in my case. And we have now a very simple house generator. And again, here with the chain node, this brings a lot of new possibilities. And I don't really have to worry anymore about placing pieces next to each other because the chain node will nicely do that for did it for us. So we can create more complex houses. We can add, we can start adding more and more different modules here and make more variation. So that was already basically it, what I wanted to show. So within 18.5, definitely check it out. And for those of you who are wanting to really learn Houdini and are up for a challenge, you can try here, for example, build something like this. And I have a small tool that generates a random layout, as you could see. And I challenge you to then also build this as well. This is a small tool here that will output these certain uh, planes in the air. So that's the only thing we need to basically generate is this. And then the house generator here will then nicely place the modular models. If you want to take your skills to the next level, try out different things and experiment with these setups. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.